Cuban sandwiches. Those were delicious. And they were like these sandwiches with, you know, their cheeses, their meats, and then you put them in some kind of machine and they just press them so the cheese is melted. The bread is, is delicious on a special Cuban bread. I, I, I love Cuban sandwiches. Also, there's this place called Taco Ceviche. It was out of a truck, but it was the best like um, Spanish food or Mexican food uh, that I've ever had. Um, we'd always, you know, we'd always go there. Every time, we, you know, our allotment for our money come, come, came in, we would go to Taco Ceviche on our lunch break, and it was, it was delicious. They, they, knew, they knew us really well there. Yeah, I haven't had really too many crazy foods. Um, Man, the members in Florida, they really know how to cook. They, they give us their best. Uh, you know, there was cornbread pudding, which I was like, cornbread pudding? How's, what's that? You know, and it was delicious. Um, I've eaten cactus, and that was delicious. I had, um, what else have I had? Um, gosh, some Lebanese food. Lebanese food was, was delicious. Um, they really fed us well down there. I saw uh, alligators on the side of the road. Um, I, I walked right by an alligator in a ditch and I didn't know until I, I turned back and I saw about maybe, maybe an eight or nine foot alligator who could have just grabbed my leg, you know, uh, when I walked by, but I didn't see it. Um, so there are a lot of alligators there. I ate alligator and it was delicious. It was like a chicken and fish type mix. Um, I ate frog legs, you know, so I never thought I'd eat alligator or frog legs, but I did, and I loved it. It was great. Every day in the summer, around three o'clock, we'd hear t -t 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 -t, and we could see the wall of rain coming towards us. So we'd always try to take our lunch around that time, and you know, we'd book it to either a member's house or to our apartment. Um, but every, without fail, around three o'clock, in summer, it would rain and it would, it would drench us. So we'd have to come back and we'd change clothes, you know, and then after 20 minutes or so it would pass and we'd go back out. But uh, super humid, which was great for our skin. <laughs> and uh, if, if we got really, you know, hot, it, we were able to cool down a little bit. One time um, in our mini outings where we'd play with the, play with the youth in, uh, in uh, Seminole Heights, um, we saw, um, you know, some young men talking, um, the voices started to get, you know, louder and louder. And from what we could take is there, there's a young man from an, another neighborhood. Um, and they were kept calling him Chico because he was, uh, I don't know where he was from, but um, all, he was, I think he might've been half black, half Mexican or from Puerto Rico or anyway, he came over and he wanted to fight somebody in a neighbor, another neighborhood. And that's not something that you do. You don't leave your neighborhood and go by yourself to confront somebody in another neighborhood because in that neighborhood, they're all together. And so, um, as you know, he was getting loud, the next thing I know, somebody came from the side of him and, and then punched him. And another person came from the side, punched him, kicked him, he's on the floor. And like maybe 10, 10 kids are just jumping on him, stomping on him. And you know, we're yelling, hey guys, get off him. Hey, we think the police might be coming. And you know, after a very long 15, 20 seconds, you know, they got off him and you know, he stumbled off. And that was uh, really intense, you know, in that neighborhood. I'd never seen anything like that. You just heard about it. But for that to happen in front of us, it was really sad to see, um, you know, uh, to see that happen. One hard experience is, um, you know, as we, we get to know these people and we love these people and, and, and gain a relationship with them, um, we, we, there was this young man named Wes. And uh, Wes was progressing. He was coming to church. Uh, he had quit smoking. Um, and then we hadn't seen him for a while. He wouldn't answer his door. We knew he was inside, he wouldn't answer his door. Um, but we'd still come back, you know, maybe once every couple of days to check on him, leave messages on the answer to the machine. And, you know, one day we came uh, knocking on the door and, um, you know, he left the Book of Mormon that we had given him in a bag and just left it on the, uh, on the doorstep. And that was really hard for me because I could see his life changing and his demeanor. Um, and you know, just things were going better for him. He was, he was happier. Um, and I don't know what happened. You know, I don't know the explanation, obviously. Um, you know, something working against, working against him. Um, but, you know, just to not be able to reach him and talk to him and help him as we were helping him, that was really hard because I know all the blessings that I've received from, from this gospel and the blessings that um, those around me and those that I brought it to, um, 
have, have received and for him not to receive that I was hard because we really loved him and we knew that you know his life was about to change forever as a missionary it's nice to have a lot of socks a lot of garments um, uh, however um, when you get out in the mission field on, on P days you can go out and get extra slacks and things like that if you need but um, I would not bring too much I would bring the essentials um, uh, and I would make sure I'd pay really close attention to the list that they give you in your calling. They say, make sure to bring these things and how many pairs. If you stay close to that, you're going to be okay. Um, but if you don't have um, anything that's not on that list, or um, I, I, would, I would make sure you have the essentials, the things that, was, that are on those lists. And anything else that's extra, I really wouldn't worry about. Like I said, I was in uh, um, the inner city uh, in Seminole Heights for six months. And from the first day that I got there, I met an investigator, named, uh, an investigator, and his name was Corey. And Corey was awesome. He came to all our family home evening activities, um, even when it was just him. Uh, he came to church, um, and he studied with us, and he was great. But we just could not get him to commit to being baptized. And um, fortunately, a lot of members fellowshipped him. And the last Sunday that I was there, um, was able, we were able to um, baptize him uh, in the morning and then confirm him um, at church. So that was, that was really special for me to see that myself and to have been a part of that and that change in his life. Um, 